Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject fundamentals of the manufacturing processes and uh, we are talking about the methods uh, used for improving the properties of the bulk materials, mainly the surface properties. So, in the previous presentation, I have talked about the methods which are uh, used for improving the surface properties without modifying the chemical composition. And in this presentation, the processes wherein the chemical composition of the surface is modified in order to improve the properties of the surfaces. So, uh, there are various uh, mechanisms which are used to modify the composition of the material according to this uh, uh, for this purpose means uh, uh, like this is the component whose uh, surface uh, properties are to be improved. So, near surface layers of the component are uh, composition of the near surface layers is modified by uh, having the suitable environment. Uh, like say normally certain alloying elements which uh, will be helping to improve the properties of the surfaces mostly like in uh, the ferrous systems uh, like uh, introducing the carbon or nitrogen or boron or vanadium etcetera all these help in, in improving the formation of their uh, phases and compounds at the surface layers. So, the properties uh, especially hardness, wear resistance, uh, sometimes residual stresses are also uh, favorable residual stresses are produced which help in improving the properties of the uh, components being made uh, by the manufacturing processes. So, the basic approach is to modify the near surface layer microstructure where in basically the change in composition uh, helps in bringing the suitable uh, formation of the formation of the suitable phases, compounds. Uh, intermetallic compounds, carbides, borides, uh, martensite, etcetera. So, basically the compositional modification is done to have the suitable type of the constituents near at the surface or near surface layers so that the suitable type of the properties can be uh, developed. And for this purpose, some common elements which are introduced in the surface uh, of the ferrous metals mostly uh, are in form of like say carburizing, uh, carbon is introduced in the carburizing process, nitrogen is introduced in the nitriding process, boronizing process uh, introduces the boron, vanadizing introduces the uh, vanadium. So, uh, in these processes, this, so this is one category of the processes where some kind of the diffusion is involved for uh, modifying the near surface layers and uh, uh, this, so this is one category of the process where diffusion uh, is the mechanism which is uh, which helps in modifying the near surface layer composition. There is another set of the processes wherein uh, we put at the surface we put the suitable material uh, like it is called pre-placing put the suitable material at the surface and then this material is melted with the substrate material using suitable heat source. So, heat source is used uh, uh, may be used uh, in form of uh, uh, like a laser beam, plasma or TIG arc. So, uh, accordingly we say that uh, the laser alloying, plasma alloying or the TIG alloying. So, here material is placed and it is uh, melted with the suit using suitable kind of the heat source so that it forms the integral part of the substrate and near surface layers composition is modified. So, this uh, an approach is basically the melting. So, melting is another approach uh, where in the surface layer composition is modified uh, through use uh, by through uh, the use of these uh, sources of heat maybe electron beam or laser or plasma or uh, the flame also can be used for this purpose. There is another set of the process where near surface layer composition is modified through the use of the ions. So, high velocity ions are directed onto the surface. So, what we do uh, basically in this case the metal vapors uh, uh, are allowed to move up. So, they get deposited at the surface of the component whose properties need to be modified and then ion beam is directed onto the surface. So, a high velocity ions uh, when directed onto the surface when they impact due to the high kinetic energy near surface layers uh, is affected by the two ways one crystal structure is deformed and damaged uh, and the second one whatever the metal vapors 
uh, are getting deposited like uh, in form of line nitrogen or some other kind of the elements whatever we want to introduce. So, these atoms uh, will be getting uh, deposited onto the uh, surface of the component or surface of the substrate and uh, the uh, that and when the ions impinge on the surface of the uh, component to be modified it deforms the crystal structure and as well as mixes these ions and atoms with the substrate. So, near surface layers composition is also modified and the crystal structure is also damaged and the combination of these two will be leading to the uh, modification of the crystal structure as well as the surface layer composition uh, through the use of the Iron. So, these are the three approaches melting ion, use of the ion beam and the diffusion where this crystal structure as the surface layer composition is modified so that suitable combination of the properties can be realized. So, if we see here this uh, slide it shows the kind of elements that we need to introduce. So, the kind of elements that we need to introduce will depend on the purpose for which uh, we want to modify the surface composition and the design of the component. Purpose means what is the extent of the improvement in hardness, what is the depth of uh, uh, hardened layer is needed. Like in some of the cases the depth of the hardened layer this may be means depth of the modified zone or surface hardened layer this may be just a 1 or less than 1 micron in like ion uh, beam modified methods uh, with the methods wherein ion beam is used uh, this so uh, while in other cases the depth which is modified uh, say in case of uh, uh, in case of uh, uh, like uh, uh, the laser cladding uh, sorry laser alloying or TIG alloying this depth may be even uh, 1 mm or so uh, while in other cases uh, like uh, uh, where nitrogen and carbon are introduced at the surface in carburizing and nitrating methods. So, this depth may be like say from uh, 100 micron to the 1000 micrometer or even more. So, depending upon the depth depending upon the hardness hardness. Uh, properties needed at the surface and the depth uh, of the hardened zone. These parameters will be uh, will be uh, governing the the process that we need to select uh, for the modification. Apart from these uh, functional requirements, the component uh, design design of the component which is to be modified. Uh, also affects because we need to accommodate that uh, into the uh, the process so that the modification can be facilitated and if the design is too complex then uh, heating and cooling differential heating and cooling can lead to the distortion uh, and the dimensional modification so that can be a problem. So, under those cases when the geometry is complex the component is bulky. Uh, so, we need to use such processes where differential heating and cooling is minimum and uh, for that purpose like uh, the plasma assisted uh, carburizing and nitriding are uh, found useful because the, the rise in temperature of the component is limited as compared to the uh, conventional carburizing and nitriding processes. Uh, now, we will see the details a little bit more uh, like say the, if the steel uh, hardness is somewhere say uh, 600 to 800. Uh, HK nu hardness while the hardness of the other zones uh, is uh, 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 this is said uh, 1800 to 1800 to 2000 uh, HK uh, HK hardness this, so this is the hardness scale. So, if we see uh, the low carbon steels they will be having the hardness uh, very low hardness this is for low carbon steels and when their properties are modified suitably using like say carburizing uh, nitriding then the properties get improved and the hardness gets uh, improved and we get a much wider uh, much greater hardness and uh, as compared to this one. So, this may be like say carburizing this may be for nitriding and uh, so here it is about the processes being used and on the other hand we have uh, the uh, boronizing kind of the process which much higher much higher hardness uh, uh, is realized. So, this is what we can see in this diagram where in as per the hardness levels 
uh, the low hardness for the uh, simple steels, uh, but uh, low carbon steels will be having for the lower hardnesses and when they are carburized and uh, the nitride uh, nitriding is performed, there is uh, increase in hardness takes place like say from the 800 to 1000 HK. Uh, boronizing causes further significant increase in the hardness say which may be in the uh, range of like say 1600 to 1000 HK. So, depending upon the kind of uh, process um, the different hardness values can be realized and, uh, and accordingly we need to select the suitable kind of the process. So, the functionality or the property requirement as well as the design of the component affects the selection of the suitable kind of process. Now, you will see the general approach in all these processes which are used whether it is carburizing or nitriding or uh, uh, boronizing in all these processes what we do uh, like the substrate component is taken like this and uh, then suitable rich environment is created all around the component and uh, uh, these so uh, uh, these atoms in the very nascent state at high temperature uh, when uh, uh, high temperature under the high temperature conditions when uh, environment uh, rich in either carbon or nitrogen or the boron is created around the component. So, because of the compositional difference uh, they starts getting diffused. So, there will always be compositional gradient maximum will be at the surface and it will be decreasing. Uh, as we uh, go down below the surface. So, accordingly the depth of the hardness means the extent of uh, improvement in hardness will be uh, changing. So, this is what has been uh, shown in this uh, uh, diagram wherein the requisite uh, element rich environment either in form of plasma, ions or um, uh, metal vapors. Uh, in atomic state or in ion state or plasma state is created all around the component to be modified. So, suitably say like chromium or nitrogen, carbon, boron or silicon rich environments are created. These will be getting diffused into the substrate and once they are present they will be improving the uh, properties as per their action whether they, they will be forming borides or nitrides or the carbides or it may be leading to the formation of the martensite. So, as, uh, as per the uh, kind of elements which is being added, it will be forming different types of the compounds and uh, the phases which will be having the different characteristics. So, accordingly uh, there will be different uh, kind of improvement in properties of the component uh, up to the a different level. Uh, carburizing is one of the most common process which is used and uh, as name appears in carburizing carbon uh, rich environment is created all around the component for uh, uh, introducing the carbon near the surface of the component. Uh, so, which type of the components are carburized that is what is to be seen like the components wherein we want that core is tough while surface is hard. So, this kind of the uh, properties are offered by the low carbon steels. Low carbon steels uh, as we see this diagram carbon content low carbon. So, it will be offering you higher toughness and the uh, with the increase of the carbon content. So, there is a reduction in the toughness value. Uh, so, if, if the properties are like this, so at uh, uh, while in, in, in terms of the hardness. Uh, there is continuous improvement in the hardness when the carbon is low say 0.1 the toughness is high but the hardness is very low uh, when the carbon is high the hardness is high but the toughness is very low. Uh, so, what combination we want that surfaces are hard corresponding to the 0.8 level of the carbon content while the core remains is still tough. So, for this purpose only the core composition is maintained while the surface composition is enriched with the carbon. So, for this purpose only the carbon is uh, introduced near the surface layers and this can be introduced up to the depth of say uh, 0.1 to 1.5 mm depending upon the purpose for which it is to be introduced. So, uh, the once the carbon gets enriched uh, near the surface layers and this enrichment is done up to the point uh, like say 0 0.8 to the uh, 0 0.6 to the 0 0.8 uh, weight percentage. Once the carbon is enriched at the surface, so this will be uh, leading to the higher carbon content in the steel 
uh, high carbon steel, but high carbon steel which is simply enriched through the diffusion process will not be increasing the hardness because it will be leading to the formation of the iron carbide. Actually what we need that whatever carbon has been introduced in the steel uh, that is transformed into the martensite and that is why uh, what we do the kind of thermal cycle which is used for the carburizing purpose increase in temperature up to the range of say 850 to uh, 950 degree centigrade and it is held for uh, uh, the time as per the requirement of the depth to be modified uh, where in depth modified or depth carburized is found proportional to the square root of the time. Uh, so, longer is the depth greater will be the uh, longer is the time for carburizing greater will be the depth which will be enriched with the carbon and then uh, it will be cooled. So, after cooling in again uh, it is heated to the austenitic state so that it forms the austenite for the carbon content since this is the uh, this will be leading at 0.8 percent it will be leading to the eutectoid composition of the steel where in upper eutectic temperature is 730 degree centigrade. So, heating up to say 800 degree centigrade will be leading to the formation of the gamma that is austenite. So, once the homogeneous austenite is formed we, it we will be quenching it hard. So, quenching will be leading to the formation of the martensite. So, basically uh, objective is the first heating and holding is done for carburizing purpose and once this is over carbon enrichment has taken place thereafter again it is heated so that uh, homogeneous austenitic state is achieved and followed by the rapid cooling or the quenching so that hard martensite is formed. This is the kind of heat treatment cycle which is used for uh, the purpose of the carburizing. Uh, we know that uh, the carburizing is a diffusion based mechanism wherein uh, the diffusion is found a function of the temperature as well as time. So, higher is the temperature greater will be the, greater will be the rate of diffusion greater will be the depth up to which carbon uh, will be uh, introduced in the modified surface or carburized surface. Similarly, greater is the carburizing time greater will be the depth up to which carbon will be enriched. So, depth of, carb of the carburized layer it will be the function of the time and temperature both. So, this is what we can see here as per the another diagram where in what we can see if the carburizing time we mention here in the axis scale and the depth of the carburizing is seen in the uh, y scale carburizing uh, then uh, there will be continuous increase in the depth of the carburizing with the uh, increase of the time and the rate of increase is faster for the uh, like say if it is 850 degree centigrade the rate of increase in the depth of carburizing is slow as compared to the case when depth of carburizing is high. So, at 950 degree centigrade this is what we can see here in this diagram what it is showing is schematically that near surface layers will be having the higher carbon content as compared to those which are below and the depth up to which carbon is able to get diffused into the substrate that is called carburized layer and the depth of the carburized layer we can see here increasing from uh, as a function of carburizing time it is increasing at 850 degree centigrade increase is limited while at 950 degree centigrade with the as a function of carburizing time increase in uh, depth of the carburizing uh, uh, layer uh, or carburizing depth is increasing at much higher rate and this is attributed to the higher rate of the diffusion of the carbon uh, into the iron at the higher temperature. And we know that uh, since the carbon directly affects the kind of phases which will be formed the kind of, kind of uh, the amount of the hardness uh, amount of the martensite which will be formed and the hardness of the martensite. So, both uh, the carbon con increase in carbon content increases the martensite uh, fraction uh, and the increases the hardness of the martensite both. Uh, we know from this diagram that the martensite may be formed but the hardness is less like this say maybe like say 30 or 40 HRC uh, HRC and uh, with the increase of the carbon content this may be like say 60 to 65 HRC. So, what we can see here with the carbon content 0 0.2 and with the carbon content 0 0.8. So, even if the martensite is formed it is a very low carbon at uh, if the carbon content is very low in the martensite hardness will be low, but uh, the hardness increases with the increase of the carbon content. 
and it becomes a maximum say around 60 65 so the carbon directly affects the amount of the carbon presented the surface directly affects the fraction of the martensite which will be formed as well as the hardness uh, that will be obtained and as we go down below the surface what we can see here uh, there is a continuous drop in the hardness because of the decreasing carbon content uh, in the subsurface region. This is the typical method, there are three ways of the carburizing, one is uh, the solid carburizing, uh, there is also not, mm, this is also known as pack carburizing, then liquid carburizing and gas carburizing. So in all these cases the concept is same where carbon rich environment is created around the component so that it can get diffused into the surface and here in the uh, so pack carburizing or solid carburizing. Uh, the steel chamber uh, filled in with the charcoal and a limited amount of the oxygen leads to the formation of the carbon monoxide which decomposes into the carbon and oxygen and that leads to the introduction of the uh, enrichment of the carbon into the component being modified. So, this is what we can see and this is a typical heat treatment cycle which, uh, cycle which is used for the carburizing purpose initially the heating then holding during which carbon enrichment will be taking place, then a step, a step cooling is carried out for avoiding the uh, unnecessary uh, the uh, residual stress formation or uh, we can say the distortion tendency due to the, the, uh, the due to the thermal shock kind of conditions. So, a step cooling helps in avoiding the cracking as well as the distortion tendency. Thereafter, rapid quenching helps to have the martensitic transformation and after the martensite uh, is formed uh, it is tempered. So, this uh, many times in the solid carburizing uh, direct quenching, direct quenching is not practically workable. So, what is done first the pack carburizing, uh, carburizing is done in the box then components are taken then again it is reheated uh, for uh, heat treatment purpose and thereafter it is quenched. While in case of the liquid carburizing it is somewhat easier because uh, we can take out the sample easily from the bath and then we can quench directly uh, into the water or any other suitable medium for quenching purpose. So, liquid carburizing can help directly in heating in one go then followed by quenching to achieve the uh, desired hardness while uh, in case of the solid carburizing we need to do the heating uh, twice first for the carburizing purpose and second for the uh, hardening purpose. Another mechanism is the uh, another mechanism is uh, or the surface modification approach is the nitriding. Uh, carburizing we know uh, is done in the austenitic state uh, uh, so heating is done uh, above the upper critical temperature so that homogeneous austenite can be formed and a, a lot of carbon can be introduced in in the austenite which is having the FCC structure and can accommodate lot of carbon and has the higher solubility uh, to the carbon. While in case of the uh, nitriding the approach is different, nitriding is always carried out in the uh, ferritic state. So, uh, normally uh, the, the heating is done up to the temperature of 500 to 550 degree centigrade and uh, in the of course in the nitrogen rich environment. So, in a box basically uh, ammonia is heated, so ammonia uh, breaks into the nitrogen and the hydrogen and uh, this nitrogen uh, gets uh, diffused into the, uh, the surface of the component at the high temperature in the ferritic state of course. So, 500 to 550 degree centigrade is the normal thing which is used. So, in this process basically the nitrogen will be getting introduced the surface in the ferritic state. So, basically it will be leading, leading to the formation of Fe3N or Fe4. Uh, Fe4 and so these are the kind of compounds which are formed at the surface will be having the more uh, uh, nit uh, nitrogen concentration as compared to the below surface regions. So, a typical white layer is formed at the surface where higher concentration of the nitrogen exists in and this uh, white layer becomes very hard, very brittle and so it has lot of cracking tendency and therefore normally this white layer after the nitriding is removed so that we are uh, left with the only the stable nitrides at the surface which can offer the improved properties in the material. Uh, simple for uh, the nitriding for the simple steels is not that effective be, uh, because it will be leading to the simple formation of the 
iron nitride only. So, uh, in order to have the more uh, effective nitriding process, a certain uh, steels having the uh, presence of uh, vanadium, chromium, uh, aluminium, these are uh, added so that they can form their nitrides effectively and that is why certain alloy steels are found more suitable for nitriding purpose and these alloy steels generally have the concentration of good concentration of the vanadium and chromium because their nitrides are very hard and stable. So, they will be leading to the more uh, improved uh, and effective nitriding process and the resulting properties will also be better. So, this is the general principle of the nitriding process this is what we can see here and effectiveness of the nitriding is also different for the different alloys because of this uh, difference. So, we can see as a function of the nitriding time uh, since the nitriding is also diffusion based processes so when the uh, nitrogen rich environment is created with the help of ammonia uh, it will be uh, leading to the uh, diffusion of the nitrogen into the steel surface. Uh, so, uh, if we keep on increasing the nitriding time, the depth, uh, the amount and the depth up to which nitrogen will be introduced at the surface that will be increasing. So, what we can see here, uh, there is increasing hardness, uh, increasing depth of the uh, nitride layer which will be produced for minimum hardness of like say 50 HRC. Uh, so, this is the condition that uh, the, for minimum increase in the hardness of the 50 HRC the depth up to which this uh, uh, this much improvement in the hardness is achieved is like say this is this depth is increasing uh, at lower rate for th uh, for this is still 4340 while the rate of the improvement is much faster for 4140 and uh, it is much faster for the uh, nitro alloy. So, the reason for this is uh, attributed to the presence of the uh, different elements in the different amounts which are which will, will have which will be having more affinity to the nitrogen uh, and they will be forming more hard and stable nitrides. So, this is what we can see in the typical nitride surface we will be having a higher concentration of the nitrogen. So, eta kind of the nit nitride is formed at the surface then gamma nitride is formed below that and then diffuse nitrogen is present below that. So, since the because of the difference in the nitrogen concentration maximum at the surface nitrogen concentration and uh, then below that the, it is somewhat lesser, but this is the zone where uh, uh, then uh, nitrites will be formed that is the compound formation will be taking place while further below uh, nitrogen concentration is lower and uh, nitrogen is there in the diffused state in the steel. So, these are the zones uh, which will be subjected to the greater hardness uh, levels due to the nitrite formation. Plasma nitriding and the plasma assisted carburizing these are the another set of the processes where uh, instead of the decomposition of the gases into the atomic state uh, here directly these uh, uh, constituents like uh, active nitrogen and uh, uh, carbon are obtained directly through the plasma formation and uh, when the plasma is formed uh, for using the suitable kind of the gases so that we have desired carbon and nitrogen uh, in the environment and this is achieved using uh, quite low temperature like uh, 300 to the 800 degree centigrade and under the pressure of 300 to 1000 pa and when this kind of uh, the nitriding is carried out when the nitriding is carried out in the plasma state of the carbon and nitrogen uh, it can uh, it, it the process is uh, much faster it takes lesser time and the maximum temperature generated to the component is also lower so one um, then modified zone near the surface layer is formed uh, after the modification uh, the laser alloying uh, is the another method where the surface composition is made through the surface composition is modified through the alloying uh, purpose and uh, the general approach for this is the basically pre placement method and uh, the component or the constraints that uh, we want to add is identified as per the requirement of the purpose like say carbon is steel if we take an example of the carbon is steel if its composition if its corrosion resistance is to be improved then we will be putting a layer of the chromium over it. So, because chromium is known to uh, improve the corrosion resistance and then chromium is melted using the beam of the laser. So, basically laser beam is directed onto the pre placed uh, chromium and 
then uh, when laser beam directed it melts the chromium as well as it melts little bit the surface of the base metal. So, uh, this is how uh, uh, the kind of the mixing of the element placed at the surface and the uh, is taking place with the uh, substrate. So, uh, the dilution levels in this case are much higher may be say 25 to 50 percent where lot of melting of the base metal takes place uh, for mixing of the elements being placed at the surface. So, this is how the composition of the surface uh, layers can be modified in order to achieve the desired properties at the surface. So, this is what we can see here uh, in the laser alloying uh, the this is a substrate and the element to be introduced is uh, applied in form of the paste over the substrate and then laser beam is passed. So, wherever there is a laser beam there will be the molten state mixing and the mixing of the substrate, uh, mat substrate material with the material placed over the substrate and after the solidification will be leading after the solidification we will be getting the modified zone. So, this is how we introduced uh, the, uh, the elements at the surface and uh, that is how uh, uh, that is why it is called laser alloying. So, if we see this component uh, which has been laser alloyed what we can see here the thin this is the substrate and near the surface layers are modified using the nickel and phospho phosphorus coating and nickel. Uh, and uh, this modified zone is extremely small maybe like say 5 to 10 uh, micrometer and uh, this is realized like by before pre placing uh, by before we pre place the material to be alloyed and then laser beam is passed over the surface. So, that uh, mixing of the, uh, the material pre placed with the base material after the melting uh, leads to the formation of the uh, leads to the formation of the uh, alloyed layer. This is the another example of the laser alloying where the material placed at the surface uh, properly mixed with the base metal and forms the very uh, coherent uh, modified surface layer which is uh, very solid. This is the ion implantation method as I have explained. This is the substrate material and, uh, and atomic arrangement in the substrate material and uh, the material to be uh, incorporated at the surface is uh, evaporated and these metal vapors will be getting deposited over the surface and uh, when the ion beam is directed at high uh, velocity onto the surface. So, this will be leading to the uh, increased mixing of the uh, these at atoms with the substrate uh, material and uh, thus the surface uh, uh, layers uh, get modified and in this process um, uh, the surface layer crystal structure is also modified. So, we will see that uh, the most of the, the ions and the metal vapor atoms uh, all these are present uh, at the surface and their concentration will keep on reducing with the increase of the depth from the surface. So, uh, here now I will summarize this uh, presentation. In this presentation basically I have talked about uh, few approaches like carburizing, nitriding, uh, ion implantation. Uh, uh, basically it, it is the nitrogen ion implantation which is used uh, very commonly for improving the properties and then laser alloying. These are the methods which can be used to modify the surface layer composition uh, for improved properties of the components. Thank you for your attention.